We have some squatters here. Yeah. I have called the police, I have called um, the council. No and one can help. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, don't you go in there. Don't come in here. Oh, it's not raining. Today at A Grade Property Management, it's business as usual for renowned local property manager Tracy Lee. Oh, car needs to clean. She's heading out to the village of Fanuapai to meet a landowner client with a squatting problem. We have some squatters here. Um, some interesting behaviour going on. Tracy Lee's landowner is at her wit's end. Nice to see you. After some squatters moved in and refused to leave. We need yes, to yes, yes. talk about these squatters. He has been here around two years. And you've asked and asked for them to be gone. Yes. Done everything you know what you're doing. You've asked and pleaded and done everything you can. I have called the police. I have called um, the council. No and, one can help. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully, with a little bit of my background, we might be able to do something. So should we go and have a look? Yes, please. OK, let's go. So is there much mess going on? Yes, there's on the paddock. Oh, no. Oh, no. The act of defecating in a field you're not even paying rent on is beyond outrageous. Tracy can't help but notice beer bottles, junk, even a toilet bowl. OK. Yeah. At Good Girls Property Management in Christchurch, a group of male tenants has been given a 90-day notice to vacate due to a pathological inability to keep their rental clean and tidy. There could be a few items that have been left. Property managers Raywin and Prue are due at the now empty house to undertake an exit inspection. Right. Let's go and have a look. Let's go and have a look. I'll grab the rubber gloves. They don't match the purse, but who knows? Aside from unpaid rent, the boys also had a reputation for slovenly behaviour. The girls are prepared for the worst. You're a paramedic. Did you bring your stethoscope? <laughs> But one of the tenants has given Raywin cause for a glimmer of hope. Well, there's been one tenant that has been quite good in get, keeping in communication with me and telling me that... He's a very I've nice done, young man. I dealt with him. I've done I've as, as best that I can do. Mm, right. <laughs> but being a 20-year-old male, you know, sometimes they're good at cleaning. Yes. It'll be interesting. We shall see. That's it. Unfortunately, as the good girls approach the property... Oh, my God! All the furniture! <laughs> all optimism is extinguished. The bed. Look at... Oh, look! There's look at, chairs and the stools. Oh, Jesus. The naughty ex-tenants have left the driveway like a garageless garage sale. It is foul. Oh, look, we've got a toasting machine around here. But if the outside looks like this... Ready? I'm ready. The inside is guaranteed to be the same or worse. Oh, you can smell all that. Prue has catalogued thousands of nasal nasties in her long career. It's quite a large house, too. It stinks. But consulting her database of olfactory offences, she's drawn a blank on this one. What is the smell? Watch that vacuum cleaner there. I don't know what that was used for. Oh. It's not in the kitchen. Mm. It's not coming from the lounge. Oh, you can smell it. But a tractor beam of trauma... Mm. Tech, no, Ted's not interested. ...points directly to the bathroom. What's oh, it good at? Leading Raywin to a shower stall shambles. Oh, she's not good around the edges. Mm. Come on! I like this. If they thought the shower was the source of such sensory sorcery, there's a bowl of abomination in the bog. Oh, oh, don't you go in there. Don't come in here. Is it bad? A-grade property manager Tracy Lee is assisting landowner Mead who's trying to evict a group of squatters. Not only have they been here for nigh on two years, they're much bigger than the landlady and do not speak English. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, Here's your squatters, five horses. Yeah. While Tracy's relieved the squatters are only horses and all the junk is just Mead having a clear out, 
They belong to a man who made a gentleman's agreement to graze a couple here for just a short while. So when do they move in? Uh, more than two years, nah. Did, did five horses just arrive, or...? Um, actually, the number of the horses increased. OK. Without no fiving us. OK. Yeah. Tracy's not just a property manager, she's active in equestrian circles, where she's been hearing strange rumours of late. So this one was born here? After making a few calls, Tracy is able to tell Mead she's been subject to a classic country scam. It turns out he's quite well known in the area, and this isn't the first time he's done this. So I had people saying, oh, we think we know who he is, he's been at our place, is his name blah? Is this the behaviour? And I've gone, yes. Yeah, so we, we are dealing with kind of an endemic problem. Tracy plans to crack the whip on this situation for the sake of her client and her unwanted, clearly unloved guests. I mean, for a quality of a horse fence, that's not ideal. <laughs> this place is not suitable for horses. Um, and they've had no water to the trough, so they've been going into that creek, which is now drying out for water. They've got little cuts and scratches. <laughs> it was just never intended to be for horses. While this pony predicament is much more complicated than a standard human eviction, Tracy loves a challenge. Beautiful. Yeah. Step one, issue a 14-day removal notice. Step two, find out how to move horses in a hurry. Luckily, Tracy's friend Philippa has just turned up to help. So, have you seen the squatters? I have. What can we do to get rid of them if this guy ignores his 14-day notice? Now, I know the legal process, and then the court will say, OK, you have the right to get rid of the horses, but what do you do with five horses? Well, because they're at all different ages, you've got a little bit of a problem there. So you're going to have to probably get someone that specialises in dealing with breaking in horses and young horses and trying to get them on a truck. The only way that you could probably reach out to these people is through Facebook is a very good source. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of equestrian pages on there. For years, people have wondered what social media could be used for. Maybe now is its time. Tracy has a date with her keyboard and a computer screen to update her status. In Albany, you can almost hear the clatter of A-grade property manager Tracy Lee's keyboard as she smashes Facebook feeds, Instagram and even neighbourly, looking for a home for five unloved horses. I've just been sent a notice. But Tracy's highly productive workflow has been interrupted for a moment. Yet another problem has reared its ugly head. If we make it about one-ish, I've had five squatter horses, and now I have another squatter of a different type. This time, the squatting is north of Oriwa, where a vehicle has been parked up for months at the home of one of Tracy's tenants. Going through Oriwa, need your wits about you driving through here. What do they call it? The newly wed and the nearly dead? At the property, Tracy is confronted by a nearly dead camper van. OK, it's gumboot time. And long-suffering tenant Wendy, who's had to look at the arse end of it for months and months from her kitchen window. I had this elderly guy turn up on the doorstep and ask here. me... Yeah. Yeah, it was like October, November last year. Yeah. And asked me if he could leave it here until after Christmas when everything opened up again because he wanted to get some work done on it. He dropped it off. I saw him once after he dropped it off, and that was just before Christmas. And he said, just popped in, said, uh, is it still OK? I said, yep, you're still planning to come get it. And he never showed up again, and I haven't now, seen him. Now, you've got his phone number. What's his name? His name was... Well, he told me his name was... Yeah, and when you ring his phone when number... You ring the phone, it's... Mistaken or double identities, Tracy Lee's seen them all before. This property manager loves a good mystery. I'm Mary Poppins today. Cluedo's one of her favourite games, and she's about to roll the dice. What if it's locked? Kind of. I suppose that's a way of securing something. The camper van's condition and contents reveal a number of leads. Grass in the windows, a smashed windscreen, no red joe, and a door handle that falls off. Its owner is most likely transient, male, hopelessly disorganised, with a bump on his forehead. But this property manager has already formed a plan. Next day, the sun's out and so is Tracy Lee, complete with flyers to put up around the village. First stop, community notice board. Poor lonely little camper van. Hi there. 
I'm Tracy. You don't own a camper van like this? No. You don't know anyone who does? No. Every random stranger, every random car, every random camper van gets a flyer. Someone must know something. You don't know a who owns a camper van that is no longer suitable for camping? No. No. Can't see any. Hunt for the origin of an unidentified odour has led Good Girls property managers Prue and Raywin to a first floor bathroom and the toilet itself. Oh, just to get these on. Oh. Is it bad, darling? Is it. We got DNA readings. Hey, but they've left a plunger. Oh! The contents of the bowl resembles a recently unearthed torpedo from World War II. Oh. But this marine is getting court-martialed for crimes against porcelain. Shall we check the extractor? Do it. <laughs> the extractor fan complains bitterly about having to process the stench. Oh, she's not. She's not happy. No. Whatever was being extracted. Is it clean? I just... Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, not good. Prue may be saying no, but next door, she thinks someone's been saying yes over and over again. This is a mattress. Those are shunting They must have marks. had something in bed that they were drinking, because it's halfway down the wall. So there's a bit of liquid along with the shunting stains. More than likely. It's not just the wall that's been taking a hammering. Prue notices suspicious stains on the floor. Let's just say it's toothpaste proof. But sticky curtains. We have this lovely effect. And alleged sex toys in a bedroom cupboard. Oh, what's that? Extra marital. <coughs> All paint a picture. Fifty shades of gross. There must have been a hell of a lot of heat in here. Because look, even that's sticking. I don't think they'll be getting any of their bond back. No, they won't. It's going to take a week for a cleaner to actually clean. But it's not just Janola and Jeff required. Shockingly, a critical piece of the dwelling's infrastructure yeah. is gone. Do you mind shutting the door while you're there? Yeah. Uh, do you think? Home renovations. Time has officially run out for the mysterious owner of the derelict camper van parked on Tracy Lee's tenant's driveway. I've just contacted Wendy, the camper van's still there, nothing's worked. The internet hasn't worked, um, the phone hasn't worked, legal process hasn't worked, old fashioned walking the streets has not worked with the flyers and the posters. Um, so Mr Camper Van, Mr Trespasser is going to go off to where old camper vans go. He's going to go off to the camper van yard, I guess. Tracy's going up to personally oversee the removal of the camper's corpse. It's all part of the A-grade service. So that's our uh, squatting camper van. Okay. Do you think you can move it? Yeah, of course we're going to move it. Hope yeah. it doesn't fall apart no. when you try to tow it. I'm a lot stronger than I look. Thank you so much. Well done. One derelict camper van down, just five squatting horses to go. Thank you, Mega Car Parts and Collections. Finally, finally. A good girl's property vacated by some unruly male students has been left cluttered, smelly and dirty. Those are shunting They must have had something in bed that they were drinking. But while these breaches of tenancy can easily be rectified, a missing kitchen door can't. Hey, do you mind shutting the door while you're there? Yeah. Uh, These are as scarce as hen's teeth in the post-quake city. So Prue's rung the lads to find out where it's gone. So the burglar came with a Phillips head screwdriver and removed the door and took nothing else. Due to the citywide door shortage, it's been alleged burglars are surgically extracting these precious items. 
Judging by the state of the other doors in the house, Prue thinks it more likely the ex-tenants wrecked it and chucked it out. It's enough to make a property manager sick. <laughs> there, that looks like vomit to oh, me. This was yeah. the party area. Raywin suspects it was a stag party. Do you think they might have uh, killed something? Yeah, there's a dead weed whacker. And then I think they lost the weed whacker, did they? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Prue's seen enough. All the cleaning. It's going to take And the, the rubbish dumping alone. Yeah, it'll take the cleaner over a week. Now to formulate a plan and drill down into how everything went so terribly wrong. Dreadful behaviour, isn't it? Really. Mm. It's time for the girls to close one of the only doors left on the sorry saga. Yeah, all locked. Good. And head back to the office. Good, we can get our people now. Tracy Lee is back at the Auckland lifestyle block inhabited by squatting horses. So we're going to catch him. After days of posting notices and what's fashionably called reaching out, she's hooked up with horsey types who found them new homes. I've trespassed, I've given notices, I've put notices in the newspaper, I've contacted people who know him and said, please, please, could you contact me? And the owners have had the horses here for over 12 months. And they far look at their farm, it's just trashed. Um, so thanks to you, they will get lovely homes. The plan is simple. Move horses onto truck, leave. Look at me, active wear, active wear. I'm moving horses in the active wear. But Tracy knows it never quite works out like that. So we're using bribery and corruption. As so often happens in property management, these tenants are not going quietly. The first horse clearly suspects it's going to be put up in a motel unit. The girls work quickly, knowing the absentee owner of the animals could turn up and start throwing carrots or a wobbly at any moment. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> Luckily, horse number two is all on board with the rehoming process, and before Tracy can say bot fly, both animals are fetlocked and loaded, ready to move to their brand new accommodation. So we're going to take him home so that he's in stable and I'm there. And I can do that, and then he's being he's being um, moved to a home in Dargaville, which is like a sanctuary. Hey, that's so amazing! Such good work. Everyone deserves to have a little stability in their lives, especially property managers, and especially Tracy Lee. I hope someone does that for me when I retire, get a vet to me, and get my teeth done, and put me in a beautiful pasture. <laughs> that would be nice. Good Girls property managers Prue and Raywin are cock a hoop this morning because they've been told the disgusting doorless dwelling has been reinstated to its former glory. One just looking that it's clean, new curtains, garden has been done, so all sorted. Last time the front entrance looked like a second-hand shop. Now the coast and the clutter is clear. So all the rubbish has gone from out here. Which is good. Yep. Fabulous. Because there was shite all across. No rubbish in here. If the inside's as good as the outside, it should be a joy to behold. So let's have a look, Miss Raywood. Point out these items. It already smells better. Oh, this was the moss riddled shower. The shower smells wonderful, fresh and clean. And look at the fan. Anybody using the toilet cubicle from now on is going to want to stay in there forever. You've got this lead. Is this to a family or students? No, to four young ladies this time. Nice. Which I think will be much nice. nice. And let's open the stolen door. Ta da! We actually have a door here now. You have to replace that door, door mm. after the burglar came with his Phillips head screwdriver. Mm. But as you can see, we've got new curtains, Pro. Well, I'm delighted by that. The cleaners have also removed the piles of belongings from sandwich presses to stools by renting a jumbo-sized skip that came with a jumbo hire cost. So the total cost of fixing this up um, was 2000 
and eight hundred dollars. But the tenants do want their bond back. <laughs> 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 And their bond was $1,800, so we'll be going to court for $1,000 more than likely.